should we speak to our offering? We should speak to our offering with words of edification. Amen. So imagine if your child comes home with a bad report card, you would rather speak words of edification rather than telling your child to give up. Amen. Even, even the same as if you're planting a garden, you make sure that you change the soil, you water it, you make sure that it has sunlight, you do all these things so that you can edify its growth and to ensure its growth. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we ought to use our offerings and speak to our offerings as if we were another person. Amen. So we can tell our offerings, you can do the impossible. You can produce. When we give our offerings, we can give it with our heart as saying, you have purpose. Amen. Right now, if you have your offering in your hand, just tell your offering, you have purpose. Amen. We need to speak to our offering and tell it, you will fall on good soil and you will speak on my behalf. Amen. Sometimes we just put our offerings and we forget about it. Amen. Or we just give as if it is a duty to give. But we want to see our offering spring forth. Amen. So we ought to speak to it if we want to see it in action. Amen. Just as Jesus tells us to go and fulfill the needs of the kingdom of God, we should say to our offering, go out and fulfill the kingdom, the needs of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Just as you have, we should speak to our offering and say, just as you have come into my life as provision, I pray that you will go out and you will be provision for the house of God. Amen. You may want to speak to your seed and tell your seed, you have no hold on me. You have no chains on me. If you find it hard to give, you can speak to your offering and say, you have no hold on me. Amen. The Bible and Proverbs say that, your words can bring to life. Amen. So your words have power. You need to speak to the environment. If you want to change an environment, speak to it. If you want to change how we give, we should speak to it. Amen. We should speak to our offering. The second thing I want to say is, someone waiting at a gym to train, maybe it starts with a workout or, or 10 minutes. For some time and then from there the workout becomes 20 minutes, from there it becomes 30 minutes, from there it becomes an hour. So if this person wants to see growth or they want to see a change in their body, they can't stay on 10 minute workout forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the same with our tides, we can't stay on a 10 rand forever. Amen. But we should think about growth from there. Amen. Mm -hmm. We should speak to our wallets, we should speak to our hearts saying, I can't stay on 10 rand anymore. I want to grow. Amen? Amen. So let us just bow our heads and you can just repeat this declaration after me. If we are holding our offering in our hand, Amen? We can speak to our offerings and say, You have the power to blossom. You have no hold over me. I give you out of the joy of my heart. That you may be a joy to this house. You will speak for me when I cannot speak. You are a representation of my worship to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a representation of my faith. In the, Lord Jesus Christ. in the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not belong to me. You belong to the kingdom of God. morning praise the lord thank you so much for tuning in and joining us this morning for our broadcast we trust and we believe that you'll be blessed this morning by our broadcast so thank you so much a very warm welcome to you my name is pastor ricardo and i'm the pastor of fci rama family church here in newcastle northern natal in south africa so thank you so much for joining us this morning 
Um, this morning, before we go into the Word of God, I'd like to encourage you to get your Bible, get a notebook, get a pen, as we're going to share God's precious Word this morning. Now, let us just open up before we continue in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity, O Lord, that we have to share your word. We thank you, Lord, for the most wonderful gift that you've given unto us, your word, Father God. For by your word, O God, faith cometh, and by your word, O God, we are nurtured, O Lord God, and we grow, O God. I pray this morning, Lord, as I share your word with your people, that, Lord God, that the people of God will be encouraged, that they will be strengthened, O God, with might in the inner man. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, regardless of what circumstances may be dictating. Father God, I thank you for the sovereignty of your word. I thank you, Lord, that as your word finds a way of entrance into our hearts and into our lives, Father, we will see change, we will see transformation in the life of every person that is under the influence of this broadcast. So, Father, I pray wherever your people are joining us this morning, I pray that you will bless them. I pray that your grace, O Lord God, shall come mightily upon them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nashworth. I thank you, Lord, O oh God, that as we share your word this morning, that faith will come, that it will prompt, O oh Lord God, the people of God, to stand upon the promises of your holy word. For your word is true, O oh God, and your word, O oh Lord God, can surely be relied upon, Father. And we thank you now, O oh Lord, it's the entrance of your word that gives light. So I thank you this morning that understanding will come, enlightenment will come. In the name of Jesus, direction will come and solutions, O oh God, to problems will come in Jesus' blessed name. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' precious name. And the God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God once again. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to share with you this morning um, from a very um, special psalm that is dear to my heart. And it's Psalm 121, a psalm of David. And I just feel that um, a word of encouragement to you this morning that regardless of what you're going through, regardless of circumstances, regardless of what's happening around you, that God is still in control, God is still on the throne. And um, in Psalm 121, it's a very powerful psalm. And I'd like you to go with me there, Psalm 121, the Psalm of David. I'd like to read it to you. And um, then I'd just like to share with you um, two specific verses. And um, I want to share with you this morning of God being your ever-present help in your time of need. So regardless of what your circumstances are, maybe you in a time of distress, but praise God, you're too blessed to be distressed. You're too blessed to be stressed. And God is with you. Amen. You are not alone. Now, from verse number one, David writes, and he pens it as such, he says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Wow, praise God. We are preserved by the hand of Almighty God. I'm reminded of 
in the scripture in Deuteronomy, which says you'll be blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in. And David says, yeah, the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. So praise God, you are preserved by God and the blessing of God is upon you. So wherever you are, God is with you in a mighty and a powerful way. Now I want to highlight to you the first two verses of that psalm. David says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. The, the, the key here is that um, your, your source of help, when you look to the source of your help, your help is not coming from any earthly source. Your help is not coming from any man or individual or anything on this earth, but your help is coming from the Lord and he is the sovereign God. Hallelujah. David says, my help comes from the Lord. So understand, it's not just any Lord. He is the Lord who made heaven and earth. In other words, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the, ones who cre the one who created you and I, he is the one who will help you. He is the one who will come through for you. Jeremiah 3 verse 23 says this. He says, Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. God is your source. God is your helper. God is your strengthener. God is your guide. David says he does not slumber nor does he sleep. God does not have an inclination to sleep. Yes, we as human beings, we get tired very often. You may find that you probably, if you look at your life and you backtrack a little bit, You'll see countless times, numerous times, where you've put your dependency on man or you put your de dependency on man-made systems or things in this earth. And you'll find that time after time after time again, those things have failed you. People have failed you. But God will never fail you. Praise God. The word of God from Genesis to Revelation shows us the faithfulness of God. That God is faithful. God, you can rely upon God. You can trust in God. If God has given you a word, you can rely upon that word. You can depend upon that word. And you can stand upon that word. Because God will come through for you. God is that he is that good shepherd who takes care of the sheep. And it doesn't matter whether you are young, whether you are old. He, he, he is concerned about your well-being. He's concerned about your welfare. And he will take care of you just as a shepherd would tend its flock. But even more so when a, when a sheep, you find that um, a sheep um, is, 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 is hurt or injured. You find that the shepherd will tend to that one sheep and he'll come to that sheep and he'll pick it up and he will actually carry it. So you may be going through something in your life this morning. You probably have been hurt, um, you know, could be emotionally, it could be physically, no matter what type of hurt it may be, no matter what type of pain it may be. But I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ is the good shepherd of the sheep and he is the one. Who, who will take care of you. And he, you, your life is very, very important and very dear to him. And he will step in this morning. If you will allow him, if you will give him that opportunity, he will step in this morning and he will pick you up from wherever you are and he'll bring you close to himself. He'll hold you in his bosom. You are so dear to his heart. You are so precious to him and he will carry you. Yes, you may be without strength. You may feel that, you know, you just can't make it or you just can't take it anymore. But Jesus Christ will pick you up and he will carry you. And you'll, you'll be amazed at what God can do with your life. I just want to share with you something in uh, the book of Genesis, um, chapter number 18 and verse number 14. And I want to tell you this morning that there is nothing too difficult for God to to fix in your life. There's nothing too difficult for God to fix and there's nothing too hard for God to do in your life. In Genesis 18 and verse number 14, uh, God, the Lord speaks this word 
um, to Abraham and he says this, as he's speaking to Abraham and Sarah, he says, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I would like you to highlight this in your Bible. At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. Hallelujah. He says, at the appointed time, I will return to you. In other words, God is saying, at the appointed time, I will visit you according to the time of life. Now, God may have given you a word that you've been holding on to and you've been waiting for this word to come to manifestation. But friend, I want to share with you this morning, don't let go of the word of God. Don't let go of the promises of God for one split second because God, we serve a God who is a performer of his word. Hallelujah. God performs his word. He doesn't promise you something that, you know, he's not able to do. Let me tell you, if God has said it, that settles it. Settle it in your heart. If God has said it, I believe it, that settles it. It's going to come to pass. When you find in the Bible, as you read the word of God, that's why it's so important for you to spend time with the word of God, for you to visit the word of God. That's the word I'd like to use, to visit, to visit the word of God. And visit the word daily, visit the word often and see what God has to say about your circumstance. And whatever it is that God says about your circumstance, take God at his word and stand on his word. Regardless of what your eyes may see, regardless of what your ears may hear, regardless of what you may be feeling. I want to share with you this morning that as you take the word of God and you sow it in your spirit, you'll be filled with joy. You'll be filled with excitement because expectation, expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And if you um, are at the end of your rope, you're the most likely candidate for a miracle. Uh, hallelujah. You're the most likely candidate for a miracle because when you're at the end of yourself, that is where God will step in. Hallelujah. Because he's a God who performs the miraculous and he's given us a supernatural word that you can read the word of God. And as you do this, I promise you, you will see how all of a sudden, you know, the things that you're worried about, that the things that often... Um, disturb you and disturb your peace. You'll see how those things actually move away from you because the word of God will bring peace to your life. The word of God will bring rest to your weary soul. So if you wear it out, God's word will rejuvenate you. God's word will revitalize you. Hallelujah. You'll be filled with hope. You'll be bubbling over with joy because you will be so expectant. Because as you read the word of God, you see time and time and time again how God is a miracle working God and how God can be depended upon, God can be relied upon to come through. God has come through for countless numbers of people and my friend, you are also one of those that God would like to come through for this morning. So if you just visit the word of God. God says, at the appointed time, I will return to you. At the appointed time, I will visit you. In other words, there's a set time to the fulfillment of God's word in your life. Hallelujah. The word of God is seed and you must allow seed time to grow. There are certain seed that takes um, it takes a very short time for that seed to come to fruition. And there's other seed that will take extra time. It will take extra long. But praise God, just have patience. Wait patiently on the Lord. Wait upon the Lord and you'll see how God will come through for you. Hallelujah. He says, at the appointed time, I will visit you. And God is saying to you this morning that at the appointed time, I will bring that word to pass. At the appointed time, I will visit you. Praise God. God. I want to look at something quickly in the book of Genesis chapter number 50. This is Joseph. Now, Joseph was advanced in age and this is Joseph when he was about to close his eyes and you know um, and he was about to be uh, uh, about to die. In verse 24 Genesis 50 24 Joseph speaks to his brothers now and Joseph said to his brethren I am dying. Watch this. I am dying. But God will surely visit you. Wow. I am dying. You understand that? That is a, that, This is the beauty of God. This is so wonderful. 
that, you know, if we look at our lives, our parents will not always be there with us. There is no man that will always be there with you. There is no man that can guarantee you and promise you that I will be with you till the very end. Because you'll find that your parents cannot give you that promise. They can't guarantee you that they'll always be with you. And yet, uh, uh, Joseph now, Joseph is, is dying. And he says, but God will surely visit you. That's what he's saying. Yes, I've been there with you. Now, you know the story of Joseph and what happened. How he brought his father and his brothers into the land of Egypt to Goshen. To, uh, Goshen and how... Um, how uh, uh, God had been with them and God prospered them. And now you must understand now Joseph was kind of, uh, to put it this way, he was kind of one that his brethren probably looked up to because had it not been for Joseph, there would have been no way for them to enter into Egypt and there would have been no way that they would have survived the famine that was throughout the world. But Joseph went ahead of them. God purposed it and God planned it that way that uh, Joseph was was the one that was used and there was a set time that God had planned on his calendar for Joseph to oh, to step to the forefront of his destiny to open the door for his brethren to come in and now his brethren were living in a foreign land because when you look at let us look quickly at um, Genesis chapter number 15 and God speaking to Abraham in verse 13, the Lord said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants, what your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve I will judge afterward. They will come out with great possessions. You see that God spoke to Abraham that his descendants will be foreigners in a strange land. And this is Joseph now. That is the word of God coming to pass. And that's God's word. You know, God knows everything that will happen in your life. And as you read the word of God, you'll see how God will tell you about your future. He'll tell you what's going to happen to you tomorrow. If you can just study the word for yourself, you'll see what will happen tomorrow. Hallelujah. So that's the wonderful thing about the Word of God. You can get tomorrow's news today in the Word of God. Now, jo uh, Joseph says to his brothers, Now, I'm about to die, but don't worry about me dying because God is with you and God will visit you. Surely God will visit you. We find in Exodus chapter 13, when they are about to leave Egypt, Exodus 13 and verse number 19, the Bible says, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. You see that? Hallelujah. So God visited his people, and God told Abraham, 400 years, your people will be afflicted. But after that, I will visit them. So it doesn't matter what you're going through, friend. God is with you. And when you study the life of the Israelites while in Egypt, in the land of their affliction, how God had been with them, how God had carried them, how God actually put a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. So regardless of what's happening around you, God will certainly make a distinction between you and the rest around you. Because when God is with you, surely, 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 you are set up for a triumphant comeback. And God, God will make you, God will cause you to prosper. And God will cause you to flourish in the land of your affliction. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, I want to share with you from uh, the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. Uh, we're just speaking now, I'm just sharing with you now about, you know, going through adversity, times of affliction. Jeremiah 29 verse 10, watch what God says to the prophet Jeremiah for uh, verse 10. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed. You see, there's a set time to the fulfillment of God's word. There's a set time. And every promise that God has given you, there is a set time. God doesn't forget we just read in Psalm 121, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. 
the word of God. God remembers his word. He remembers the promises that he's made. Yes, we may often forget the promises, but let me tell you, friend, God never forgets. And God says here, after 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will visit you. I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. Wow, isn't that amazing? God says, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you. God has given you a good word and God says to you, I will visit you. Now, when you um, consider that word visit, what does it mean to visit? To visit is, um, the dictionary says, it is an act of going to see a, a person or a place as a guest as a tourist or as a friend, etc. So it's 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 basically an act of going to see someone. It is it is basically going to see and spend uh, some time with someone socially. And I believe that God is going to visit you, but you've got to visit Him too. And how do you visit Him? By going to the Word of God. When last did you visit His Word? I want to encourage you, friend, visit the Word of God today. Allow God's Word, allow it to enter into your heart. And you'll see how God will visit you in an awesome and a supernatural way. Hallelujah. God will visit you and God will come through for you. Watch what um, the, the, the psalmist says in the book of Psalms, chapter number 8. This is amazing. Um, psalm 8 and verse number 4 also a psalm of David David poses the question to God and he says what is man that you are mindful of him my friend this morning you are in God's mind you are in his mind God is mindful of you his mind is full of you full of good thoughts towards you if you ever want to know what those thoughts are Go to the word of God, pick up his word today, visit his word today, and you'll see the thoughts that God has towards you. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 10, we just read it. Verse 11 says, God says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, the thoughts and the plans I have towards you, thoughts and plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a living hope. And that is what God thinks towards you. They are not thoughts for your destruction. They are not thoughts for your demise. They are thoughts of goodness towards you. They are thoughts of blessing towards you. They are thoughts of, you know, lifting you up from wherever you are. You could be in a pit today, but I'm here to tell you that God can take you out of that pit today. Hallelujah. You could be in the miry clay today, but God can take you out of that and God can transform your life. God can renew your life. It doesn't matter what dust may have settled on you, but God says to you this morning to get up and shake the dust from off yourself. Shake off all the negativity. Shake off all the bad words that, you know, that you've allowed to settle on you. Words of discouragement, words of failure and despair. Shake, your, shake those words off from you this morning. Go to the living word of God and see what God has to say about your life because he's mindful of you. And he goes on to say, and the son of man that you visit him. Wow. God wants to visit you. And I believe he'll visit you today purely through his word because as you read the word of God, faith comes to you. And as faith comes to you, you find now you have something to look forward to and you have something that, you, you know, you are so excited for God to perform and you just can't wait for it to happen. And now you, you find your expectation begins to, uh, 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 to arise within you. And once you are expectant, wow, I'm telling you, you become a magnet for miracles. You become a magnet. You begin to pull the supernatural towards you because we serve a supernatural God. And David says here, he says, the son of man that you visit him. And my friend, God will visit you today. God said to Abraham, I will visit you according to the time of life. And uh, we find Joseph also said to his brethren, God will visit you. 
Hallelujah. Jeremiah, we just read, God says, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you. So that is my word to you this morning, is that get ready for a visitation from God. Get ready. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. Don't focus on what's happening around you. Don't focus on what your eyes can see, but keep your focus on the word of God. The Bible tells us looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So you just keep looking to Jesus as you're looking to him. He's the author and the finisher of faith. That means he's the author. That means he's the beginning and he's the end. So once you begin to look to Jesus and who is Jesus? Jesus is the word of God. As you're looking at the word of God, you see how all of a sudden the light, your life story begins to change. It begins to change. It, be, you know, you may be going through a bad chapter right now, but if you will allow the Lord of Hosts, the King of Glory the author and the finisher of your faith, if you will allow him an opportunity to just speak into your life by taking the word of God today and just meditating on the word of God, I believe that the chapter, the bad chapter that you are in now, the bad experience that you are in now, it's about to be shut because he shuts a, when he shuts a door, no man can open it. He opens doors, no man can close. And he'll open a new chapter in your life. He'll begin a new chapter. He'll begin a new story. And he, it won't be a sad story that you'll be looking at all of the time. It will be his story, not your story. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Very often, if you look at your life story and you look at how many times you tried to do it on your own, you'll see how sad that story is. But when you allow God to rewrite the story of your life, friends, it's a glorious life. And I believe right now that God is about to visit you in a supernatural way, in an awesome way. So I want to encourage you this morning to go to the Word of God, spend time with the Word of God, and begin to feed your spirit with the Word of God. And you'll be amazed at what God will do in you and through you by His precious Word. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I trust that you've truly received something this morning. And um, if you haven't... Um, made the Lord Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, or you probably once you knew the Lord and, you know, you probably, you know, drifted, you know, you drifted from the Lord. God is not angry. He's not there waiting with a shambok to shambok you. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm reminded of the prodigal son. When he came home to his father, his father was there waiting for him. And that is God. He's always there waiting for you to come home for he, you know, so that he can embrace you. And when that prodigal came home, the Bible says um, the father uh, took him and commanded the servants to get the best robe for, for him and to get the fettered calf ready. And there was a great celebration. And if you this morning, if you find that you that one that drifted away from the Lord, and you want to make things right with God, because today is a new day. Forget about yesterday. Yesterday is gone. It's forgotten. You cannot recover that. But praise God, today is a new opportunity. Today is a glorious opportunity for you to make a comeback. And God says to you this morning, come back, my child. I love you, and I would like to visit you. And when a visitor comes, that's the thing. When a visitor comes, they knock on the door. And it's up to you to allow that visitor in. So would you allow him to visit your life this morning? He's knocking on the door of your heart this morning. You want to receive him and you want to make things right with God this morning. I want to encourage you. Say the simple prayer of faith with me. Hallelujah. As you say this prayer of faith, the Lord Jesus will come into your life and he'll turn your life completely around. Hallelujah. So let us just pray and you just say this prayer together with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Right now, Lord Jesus, 
I open the door of my heart to you. I invite you into my life. I welcome you to be my personal Lord and Savior. I receive right now your free gift of eternal life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood that you shed for me upon the cross. I declare right now, from this moment on, I am born again. I am a child of the Most High God. Satan, you have no unsettled claims against me. From this moment on, I belong to the living God. I am a child of the Most High God. In Jesus' mighty name, and God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. If you said that prayer, we'd love to hear from you. The details are appearing up on the screen. Write to us, share with us what the Lord has done in your life. And connect with us. The details are on the screen. If you have a prayer request, feel free to send us your prayer request. We pray for you often and we delight to see what the Lord does in your life. We delight to see you enjoy the blessing of the Lord, which make it rich, and he added no sorrow with it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that's all we have time for this morning. I trust that you've been blessed, and I just want to release the final blessing as you stretch your hands towards the screen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray, O oh Lord God, for your people. I pray that your blessing shall rest upon them. I pray, Lord God, that in blessing you bless them, in multiplying you multiply them, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray, Lord God, that uncommon favor will be their portion. I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you will visit them in a supernatural way. I pray, Lord, O oh God, in Jesus' name, that this week will be a phenomenal week, in the name of Jesus. How may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and your loved ones, both now and forevermore, in Jesus' wonderful name. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. God bless you. This is Pastor Ricardo saying we love you very much. Thank you for joining us this morning. God bless you. Have a phenomenal week. Until next time, keep walking by faith. God bless and goodbye. Mm -hmm.